Hello again guys, so uh, I'm going to do another vlog for you today whilst we're getting on with some Jeep bits. As you can see yesterday, my new rear seat has arrived. So I can actually finally have a seat in the back with the tyre pump, if you can sit down there. <coughs> so uh, the weather is foul outside, so I'm going to try and do a few bits and pieces in the hurt that I can do. I won't be able to spray paint this until the weather improves a bit. I've got some little bits that are missing. This is the hold down that holds the uh, headlight in place on the wing. This has been missing on one side for ages so I'll just spray this up quickly in here and then we'll go outside see what jobs I can get on with. I need to get the old seat out of the Jeep so this one can be test fitted just to make sure it's reproduction so sometimes reproduction stuff can be a bit dodgy when you're fitting it in. Right guys, so uh, got the Jeep all uncovered and ready to start. So you can see the old seat here, the main problem I had with it the because it's not actually a proper Winnie's MB seat, it uh, just all the time you're driving around it just does that, it's horrendous. And you can see if I lift the cushion up, you can see that weld line where the seat's been modified in the past so that needs to come out and these seats are only held in by a couple of these brackets and you see mine's missing one of the studs on each side so you just undo them and down there there's just a little bit that you unbolt and then the seat should lift straight out. So I'll get them out now and see if this is going to come out or if it's going to try and fight me. Good thing about working in these old Jeeps is that everything just unbolts or unscrews. So on pretty much you need to do any job, most things are only held in with a couple of screws. That'd be why. It has in fact got a nut on it. So, you see that's just what them little clips are like. I never even bothered to paint these to match the Jeep because I knew they'd be coming out. So now they're, now they're off before I put them back in, before the new seat's fitted. I'll get them painted up to match the rest of the Jeep. Well, it looks like these have corroded rather badly. Oh, Jesus. I hope if I was doing it the right way, wouldn't it? There we go. So it's teased up. And once again, once I get the uh, proper seat in, I'll uh, paint these up. And it's much the same. There you go. That weren't too hard. As you see, I'm going to need to give them a bit of a clean up before they get painted. Quite a lot of rust on them. But that's only a couple of seconds with a Dremel. Alright, well with the brackets all removed, in theory, this seat will now just... There you go. And it reveals your back panel. And this is your crank handle. If you start a motor fail, you can start the Jeep with the crank handle. I have had to do that on more than one occasion in the past when we were having electrical problems before it got overhauled. Right, I'll go and grab the new seat. Right, see if the new seat's going to go in. Oh, that's not what I want to do. more cool than it looks. Right, so that's in there. Right, so that's, that's a mouse trap going off. Right, so that's the seat in. <laughs> I 
bad actually. Right. Ah, as you can see here, that doesn't seem to really be any tighter in the bracket, but this seat is ever so stiff, so that shouldn't bounce about. So it's not done what I thought that would do, but at the same time it will work, so I'll take it. And here with the seat folded up you can see the difference on the bottom, so I can have my tyre pump on it which is just another nice little detail, it looks nice on display because uh, quite often I have my seat folded up like this so yeah, pretty happy with it right so I've bolted it back in fully well just hand tight, just to see how stiff it actually is oh yeah not going to have any problems with that making tons of noise you just Excellent, happy with that. Right, so next up is just a small job. You can see Jeeps store their roof underneath the passenger seat. Mine was missing the brackets and the straps when I got it, so I added them. But unfortunately, you can see that there. Rubbish reproduction footman loop just broke instantly this day I put it on. So I've got another one from a different manufacturer. I normally get my footmans from Joe's Motorpool. I've never had a problem with them. That one was from another manufacturer and apparently theirs aren't so good. So I've just sprayed up a footman. I'll go and grab that and then we'll get that off and put the new one on. So it'll be just another little job out of the way. Just look at that. Absolute junk. Literally the first time I tightened the strap up, I just sheared clean off. It's just rubbish. Let's get a better one. Right, so seems to be going alright so far. That's a bit of a fight to get these loops through the straps. But once they're through they're alright. Try and get a bit neat. Ah, one. Alright, that's that tight. Now can I actually tighten the roof strap without it having a patty? And there you go. Hold that through there like that, so that's neat. So apparently that foot and loop is not as rubbish as the first one. You see I've just been a quick coat of paint on them two brackets. That'll match the Jeep, well pretty much, when it dries off. This uh, OD paint never quite dries the same. You paint it in a hundred different days and you'll have a hundred different shades. Right, what's going to be next on today's list? I've got a gasket to clean up on the uh, steering box. So that better be next. We'll do that now. Right guys, so this is what we're contending with. This is the uh, cover of the steering box. And it's just got a skanky old gasket on it and that needs to come off so it's got nice clean metal on it. And to that end, I've got this old blade, hacksaw blade that's been cut off and angle grinded down to give you an edge so I can over there and sort it all out. I was just going to use a scalpel, but my old man insisted something like this would be better because he doesn't want any scoring on that. And uh, who am I to argue with his 500 years of experience? So uh, let's see how this works. I don't know how badly you guys can hear the wind. That is apparently Gale Force 7000 here at the moment. So hopefully that's this new microphone's doing the job. So you can see what I'm basically trying to do here is just scrape all that off. Oh, that's not doing too bad actually. This is going to take some time and probably be a lot easier if I can lean over without a camera between me and the uh, a cover so I'll get this cleaned up and then I'll get back to you and here you are guys that should be clean enough of the old gasket to put the new one on and seal up and uh, whilst I got this off I think we're going to go ahead and degrease the outside and strip a load of the paint off it and give that a new coat of paint so that matches the Jeep as well because this was not done when we did the initial overhaul 
this might be a little bit too dark to see it very well but I've got the uh, cover all cleaned up ready to be sprayed and you can see the nuts are in it with new washers and I'm going to spray it with a modern so the bit under the washer don't get any paint in it so there you have it that's the uh, cover sprayed red so whilst that's drying I'll get that steering box gasket to taken off the actual box itself right it's back at the steering box as you can see I had it stuffed with some uh, kitchen roll just to keep some of the damp out of it you see that's absorbed some more of the crud that was left inside it that's done its job so now I'm just going to have to uh, blade and see what we can get off. This is going to be harder to do than the actual cover so I'll do this and then I'll bring you back to it. Alright so that's the uh, steering box cleaned up as much as I think I'm going to get. And whilst I've got this open I'll probably degrease this and give it a nice coat of new green paint on it because that's another bit that didn't get painted when we overdid the Jeep. So I'll do that at some point. Now it looks like the red is dry so it's time to go and spray that green on the cover. Ta-da! Obviously that won't be shiny when it's dry. But that's going to be ready to go back on when that's ready, when it's all dried up. Oh Christ guys I'm telling you, that is not nice weather out here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just slapping on Slapping on some brake cleaner just to degrease this frame. Yeah, you yeah, know, get an old vehicle, take out shears in a brake cleaner company because you are going to use a lot of this stuff. But yeah, I'll just go around that with this and now I'm just going to slap a quick coat of green on it with a brush nothing fancy just to stop it getting any more corroded than it is the paint that's still on it isn't too bad that's just old and the wrong colour Right, that should do. I'll just wipe it down with a clean cloth and then I'll get the paint out. Modern matte paint is just useless. I mean this stuff, that just scratches if you look at it the wrong way. But it doesn't cost that much. And as you can see, as long as you've to grease the surface you can just slap it on with a paintbrush so when you want to do little bits like this it's pretty good just Jesus if you want the display vehicle that you just want it to look fancy and nice and neat this is not the paint for you because the second you get inside that or the second even your jacket rubs up against the edge of it. That is going to mark. There you go, look, looking better already. So I'll just finish that off. Make sure I don't get, get it all over that side. And then I'll get back to you. So there you are, that's all painted. It's looking a lot better. I'm having to use the uh, phone light. See the worm gear looking in pretty good condition. Before we put the cover back on. See the master cylinder down there is getting a bit corroded so I'm probably going to whop some anti-rust treatment on that and then paint that as well. Before the before the wing goes back on and we're also going to have the side the valve cover off because you can see that's not got the best gasket seal going anymore 
and I have a gasket for it, so we'll do that whilst the wing's off as well. Right, so I'm pretty much done out here for the day. It's starting to get rather cold. It's not been a bad couple of hours. I'll just give another coat of paint on that, so that's looking good. That's ready for the new seat to go in. I've gone around and done a little bit of touch up with a little brush with just chips and scratches as you do get with this. We've got the uh, roof footman loop on there. That's looking much better now. I'll get some kitchen roll stuffed in there just to keep the moisture out. And whilst I was down there, though I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a, uh, the radiator pipe hadn't been repainted. For some reason I never did that, so I'll just give that a coat to match the rest of the Jeep. So we got them little bits hanging up up there, they're ready to go back in. And I'll probably, I might paint the back seat this evening, I'm just going to do the back seat with a brush, because uh, the front seats are original, and you can see they're rough, and if I then had a brand new looking perfectly sprayed back seat, that'd look a bit odd. Whereas if I paint them with a paintbrush, That'll give them a little bit of texture and that'll just blend in a bit better because uh, as you can see everything on my Jeep is dented and bent and everything. We didn't get it all straightened out. I think that looks a lot more authentic like this. Right so uh, yeah I think that's where I'll call it for the day and I'll see you next time. Cheers for watching.